Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Yeah, you know, Baka! 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 Baka. It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a mini of Baka Baka Baka. We're usually a podcast that talks about an anime we just watched, but today... Of all days, we are talking about a random topic chosen off our head so that something will enter into your feed and you will remember that this podcast exists because we miss you. We do. My name is Troy, <laughs> and I uh, – and what did I – oh, I watched the new Castlevania, guys. Uh, it's only four episodes long. I wish someone had told me that before I started watching it. It was really good, and I got four episodes in, and then it was just over. It's also really gory. Don't watch that with your kids. Okay. <laughs> Before we introduce the mini set topic, let me introduce my other co-host and figure out what they've been doing. It's going to be XCOM. And if it was interesting, it wasn't. So first off, <laughs> we I have, guess we can move on at this point. <laughs> I have something. <laughs> we have the death note to my psychopath. Jeremy, how are you? I am doing pretty good. I have discovered something that everyone else is well acquainted with and loves, at least most people from what i so can this tell. is the first for you right this is a huge finding something first everyone else loves well this show is the first for me but but yes yes i generally try to stay near the edges the fringe if we, if we shall um we love you yes south park mm-hmm. south park is amazing okay it's so amazing I yep i sure try i had faith I had I had hope for just a glimmer, glimmer that he had something he had found something relevant. Are you kidding hey, me? South Park is relevant. Relevant. Yeah, oh, I true. don't. I it's honestly true. don't think he's gonna like the newest season, but I, I can't wait Uh-oh. till he gets to it. <laughs> oh, are you talking about Turd Sandwich and and um, or is it the newest newest one, the one that came out after that? Uh, yeah. We'll we'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I'm absolutely you, loving, like I just saw the episode where you've got like Michael Jackson moved in next door and he's got a, a little boy named Blanket and they're just um, everything. He's like, hey, hey. <laughs> so hysterical. <laughs> like his nose comes off and he's a zombie doing the thriller dance. God. Jeremy, uh, yes, everyone knows that episode. <laughs> yes. We we've all been aware of that episode for a long time. It's the first time, man. Literally I'm everyone. so behind on some of this stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I, it's a mixture because it's like, wow, that is so old. And yet at the same time, I'm so happy for you because I, I actually really love that show too. I think it's one yeah. of the smartest and funniest shows out there. Um, I think it gets a bad rap for its potty humor and people think it's stupid, but it's actually quite smart. Yeah. Um so congratulations, I I'll say I'll just say that. It's amazing. It's amazing. We also have the dragon maid to my black butler. Jason, how are you? I haven't finished that and that's one of the ones that got away from me. I got like five episodes in, I just I couldn't stick with it. Um I don't know. I I'd lost interest, so I have no idea what the reference is, is what I'm trying to get at, but I'm still offended. Good. Um <laughs> still a principle. <laughs> Great. Um, I have been doing a little XCOM. Well, actually, a lot of XCOM. But oh, no. um, one <laughs> uh, one game I'd like to give a shout out for is Ultimate Chicken Horse. I saw you were playing that on Steam. That is, um, it, it. So it it, it it it's a great throwback to the sit on a couch with your friends and play a game that is super trolly to each other, like. Uh, it's mm-hmm. Smash Brothers, but mixed with uh, build your own side scrollers. So that that's what it is. It's like you have you you have start line, and then you have objective that like you have to get your character to on a two D platform. And if you all if you all die, die, nobody gets a point. If you all get to the end, nobody gets a point. The only way you get a point is if someone else dies. And so the way you do it is every round you get to pick from this just conglomerate of items that you can put on the screen. You can put like a little black hole. If anyone goes close, they'll go in and die. You can put just a platform. You can put a door. You can put a crossbow. You can put a spinny wheel, like a, a, fer- a Ferris wheel going around. Like it's, 
it, there's so many things you can put on. So as and, and you get one item per round. So if you're playing with four players, four new items go up every round. And so it gets more dangerous and more terrible. But you have to build a path to get to the end because somebody's got to win. <laughs> right. I, I've seen that before. I think I've seen that on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, you have to make the level difficult enough for your skill level <laughs> to be <laughs> higher than everyone else's. Good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a blast. You've been playing with you with your kids? Yeah, yeah. We yeah, set up. Uh, that's fun. I plug my laptop into the TV and we connect nice. up a bunch of controllers. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So no one else has watched the Castlevania Netflix series. <laughs> it's on my list. It's literally only two hours out of your life. <laughs> <laughs> XCOM, man. XCOM. They're literally setting up a much bigger show. You can tell, like, it, it's almost like they wanted to see if anyone would watch this. And I think they've ordered season two already, which is going to be a full season, I, I believe. But yeah, it was good. It, I think it was worth watching. If you can stand the like bes- berserk gore yeah, levels, level gore. Mm. yeah, you'll be fine. New berserk or old berserk? I, do, I haven't seen either, so I just know oh. that it's Ori. <laughs> okay. Both were bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've heard that the new one is worse. Let's but... just say uh... if you can handle seeing intestines from a dead body strewn about like streamers you're fine okay okay let's go on to our mini so topic this was thought up of by jeremy and it's a very good one um it is i call it the baka animation combination so the idea <laughs> and, and correct me if i'm wrong okay you're gonna help me out with this okay we're taking two anime we're combining them to make one better anime yes and what's the like? There were all characters, no character. Like, how are we so doing this? My initial thought was to like merge the story and the merge the characters, but that proved to be way too complex than I wanted to stick with. So, uh, you know, if you want to tell both stories, like let's say tack on half as much time as the second anime, because it's a lot of story, um, but you can kind of weave it in there. Or if you want to chop one of the stories almost entirely out and find a way just to weave bits and pieces of it in and still have it at the same time. That's cool. If you want to drop some characters, that's cool. If you want to keep them all, it's kind of whatever you want. You have free reign. Okay. Well, you are up first. So oh boy. Let's see what you got. <laughs> all right. So my two anime uh, were Armitage the Third, Dual Matrix, and Iria, the Zerum animation. Now, I know you guys have seen Iria, the Zerum animation, so you're going to know where I'm coming from there. Right, but I think Troy and I are the only ones right. that have seen I have seen, I have seen well, both those because I am a over 30-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Jason, have you seen, seen Armitage? Armitage? No, I've never even heard of it. Oh, man, Armitage the Third is amazing. It's great. That's nice, but no does me no good for this. Okay, so, okay. so for the audience, these are ninety OVA yes. or movie animes, hardcore nineties. Yes. Like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're talking like the same era as Ghost in the Shell. Animation is similar, similar yes. everything. Yes. Um so because I kind of figured that these would be something that the audience might not be too familiar with, I I've been thinking about how to just very, very generally provide a synopsis without going into detail and without doing any spoilers of it. Well, Although, this would be fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so Armitage the Third is sort of a a noir in the future, Earth has colonized Mars, and we're dealing with a detective that goes to Mars and joins up with Armitage, who is a detective there. And they start dealing with this criminal uh, trying to track down a serial killer who keeps killing people that are important but turn out to be robots. And what does this have to do with her? What does it have to do with the overall issue between Mars and Earth? Um, that becomes the central plot of that anime. And you just kind of follow those characters as they eventually either develop a friendship, a love interest, or nothing, whatever you think it might be. And um, and it, it has a great ending, and they came up with a sequel that's just okay. Um, <laughs> that's true. So that, I would say, is a, it's a fair synopsis of Armitage the Third. What do you think, Troy? Am I leaving yep. anything important out? Yeah, ton of stuff, but we don't have time for that. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Okay, and Iria, the Zerum animation, is a story about um, another place but the same time if you go to the the actual live action movies which preceded the anime they're set on earth in our time 
So Iria is in a different location in space, but it can take place at our time. That's why I figure having it open and free in, in time like that, I can actually tack it on to Armitage the Third, which wouldn't be too far in our future. By the way, if you get anything out of this conversation, you need to watch the live action Iria because oh, it's God. amazing. <laughs> Did you watch it? Did you watch it? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. In the second one, there's a female Zerum. It's hysterical. <laughs> and when I say awesome, I mean like sci-fi channel. So bad, it's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like the movie. Oh. How, how about the fact that in your combining of these, there's like a rule that the timelines have to match up for you. That's so hey, weird. This is important. This it's is it's important not that weird. If, if you're going to match them up, you want them to have some sort of similarities. Yeah, it's some Strongly sense. Strongly disagree. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so the, the general synopsis of Iria is um, the main character Iria is a hunter, which is another term for bounty hunter. They, they go and they track down whatever they get paid to do. And her and her brother <laughs> are part of this group that's uh, it's this uh, bounty hunter group that's run by another guy named Bob. They wind up going for this um, this big job to to handle a um, a transport ship that sent out a distress call. They got to get the cargo back. They get to the ship, find out all hell's broken loose, and the story just goes from there. As you're introduced to Zerum, and you find out just how big of a threat he is. And Zerum is a space alien, alien monster that's yes. unkillable. That is, uh, poof, he's crazy. Yeah, crazy unkillable. So. Um, even if all you want to do is just look up the cover of Zerum the Animation, you're going to see him right there in the background. Okay. At this point, if you want to go watch these without having them completely spoiled, I have to spoil them to tell you about my mashup. So I would say go watch them now if you want to watch them. If you can find a blockbuster video that still carries them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you can still find a blockbuster. Right. Yeah. They're, they've got to be somewhere online. So <clears throat> not endorsing any kind of piracy activities, but there's Crunchyroll and stuff. You've got to find it somewhere. Actually, I think Area is all on YouTube. So, Is it? Fantastic. Yeah. So now that you've got the basic synopsis, I'll dive into the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the story is going to kind of start separately for both characters. Everything's going to go as it normally would with Area, where they, they get called out to this transport, her and her brother, Gren and Bob, they wind up going to the transport. They find out the cargo's broken loose. It's Zerum. He's killed so many people on board. Everything happens as it normally would. In the end, Bob gets injured. Gren stays behind to blow up with the ship and Area gets knocked away as the ship self destructs. So instead of it being off next to this planet called Mice, it's nearby Mars, but it's stealthed, okay? Because it's made clear in the Arius Arius story that they have different tech levels for different civilizations. And so we're just going to say that Arius tech level is so far above Earth and Mars that they can stealth. But because of the explosion and everything, pops them out of stealth. She, her craft winds up crash landing on Mars like it does in the show. But Zerum comes down way before her and starts wreaking havoc in Mars, on Mars. Okay. Now at the other end, we've got Armitage the third, right? So we've got the detective comes to Mars from earth, meets up with Armitage. They see the, the serial killer taken out a country singer, and then they find her body inside of a briefcase and she's actually a robot. Okay. So they get on the tail of the serial killer. And as they're starting to to discover things, the story's progressing a little bit by little bit. Zerum crashes into the planet and he starts wrecking everything and wreaking (coughs) havoc and the Mars military show up and the police show up and Armitage has to dive in and go fist to cuff with Zerum until Iria finally crash lands on the planet. And because there's no teleportation things, um, Armitage is going to get her butt kicked a little bit because, I mean, she's a crazy powerful robot, but this is an unkillable space monster. So she's going to lose and get mangled a bit, and Eri is going to step in and wind up uh, luring Zerum away into a less populated region of Mars, into the non-terraformed areas, where it's all like just fields and stuff, because Mars isn't all inhospitable outside of the cities and stuff in Armitage. So that, now, the rest of the story is kind of going to wind up having um, having Eria be taken by Armitage and the detective and, and hang out and kind of go under the radar while the Mars military is trying to track down Zerum and Zerum goes undercover and spawns all the stuff and creates his pod. Hold on, hold on, I gotta pause you. Okay. <laughs> I hate this, but Uh-oh. I ship it. You're gonna ship, oh, you're terrible. <laughs> you're terrible. I wondered if anybody would ship them. You can't ship them. 
It's already been shipped. <laughs> no, shipped is shipped with the detective. I want that to stay because it was so heartwarming. It was so good. He's going to um, die. I know it. He, he, yeah, Zaram's going to eat him. There's he no does, way he survives this. <laughs> he does have to die, yes. Um, so they, they, <laughs> they wind up um, – they're continuing the investigation a little bit, but but it's kind of on the on the back burner because they're also trying to hide Iria and everything. But she's severely injured, Armitage. So she winds up finding the other third, which is a male third and a young one at that who's hacking online. But instead of giving her information related to the serial killer, he winds up giving her information related to um, her father, the maker of the thirds, and because of the Zerum incident. And so she winds up with Iria and him going to the maker and on the way they encounter the Renee bot, which is going crazy and they've got to destroy it and fight it. And Iria helps them fight their big menace. Um, and then they wind up going to the, the maker and he gives Armitage the awesome wings and fixes her up. And then I was, was going to say, she better get her battle upgrade. Oh, heck yeah. And then uh, the detective gets his awesome exoskeletal armor suit and Iria, because she's able to stay there long enough, Armitage's father, winds up setting her up with some kind of crazy exoskeleton suit that kind of works off her suit's power supply as well, because she's not going to get her whip sword. She's not going to get, you know, Zerum doesn't get that massive crazy gun from the area show. Right. So those things are out earth's military, instead of using this as an opportunity to just wipe out evidence of the thirds sends up part of its military in order to wipe out the evidence. And the other part is helping the Martian military deal with Zerum because they're trying to use this to politically restabilize the colonization control over Mars. That you they will you have lost things. so many people. I know. Including <laughs> me. Okay. <laughs> Just... So then they wind up having the big fight at the end and everything is awesome. All right. <laughs> I like that. Armitage has yeah. got to be super powerful in that with her wings though. She. Um, well, the Earth military, if you remember, in Armitage the Third, they blew her apart. They destroyed her wings. They yeah, and that was just right. regular conventional military troops. I guess that's true. So I f- imagine if she fought half the time, her wings would still be usable in a fight against Zerum. So she would kind of stand in for the Fujikuro and K ability to help Iria, and it would be her, the detective, and Iria fighting Zerum at the end until the detective dies and. Area manages and to, then, and then they fall in love. And yay. no, no, that's your terrible fork. <laughs> <laughs> that's your terrible fan story about my fan story. I, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. I was going to ask questions, but I think you. There's no plot details left uncovered here. Yeah. I was there ever a plot to begin with, though? It was just awesome action sequence after action sequence. For me. I will say, I, I can see the two. I mean, they're very similar styles and stuff. The two coming together. That would be a cool crossover thing. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I like it. Um, yep. I don't think many people know what you're talking about. But I don't think so either. If, did let, let them trust you and me that it would look really cool if you like 90s anime. It would, it would blow your mind. <laughs> Jason, help us. <laughs> Is it my turn? Yes. Okay. Oh, boy, did you just kind of phase out there? <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it. Uh, no, I actually had to start looking up a little bit of a uh, couple pictures of Armitage because I had no idea what you guys were talking about. So, um, that's great. Yeah, that's interesting, to say the least. Dual Matrix, though, not Poly Matrix. Poly Matrix is just okay. And don't okay, anyways. the sex scene. The, um, there's a what? Later. Wait, they're, <laughs> but they're robots. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, um, you gotta watch the show to understand that part. I knew. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I'm going to move on to mine. Um, so I actually had a little bit of a difficulty with this one because uh, I kept coming up with these cool mashups and I was just like, no, nah, how would that work long term or like finish up a story or whatever? So I agree with Jeremy that it kind of felt like I needed to put them in the same time frame. So uh, I actually thought that it would be really neat if the bad guys from Dimension W and Psychopaths were teamed up. And Psychopaths, the the department, was a sub-department of the enforcement agency for Dimension W. And the main characters still had their own thing off to the side. And then you told the story that way where they basically do their own things, but the entire environment is not only you have the dimension W 
um, towers and stuff, but the entire world is locked down in a psychopath's world. So it would be much more difficult for them to not only investigate these numbers, but then also get to the island. Right. Um, and it would feel a lot more gritty, I think. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Um, I I like the idea, especially because like how angry he gets. I would be really interested in what his psycho pass right. levels are right. and how that would affect oh. his investigation. Yeah. Did psycho pass had? I mean, they had AI like computer stuff, but did they have robots? Like, Not like, sentient. Nothing like right. the main character girl, but. Yeah. You know, they had those those one in the underground thing. Yeah, that would be pretty good. I only yeah. vaguely remember Psychopaths. Oh, it's so good. So man. good. So good. Yeah. It, it was it was very dystopia, very uh, you know, government controls the masses kind of hmm. story. Cyberpunk noir stuff going on. Yeah, and yeah. I figured if you made Dimension W just a little more grittier and less battle anime. Mm -hmm. um, it could make for some really, really good investigative stories, I especially right. especially in a psychopath world. Well, I love the fact that with Dimension W, there was always the idea that they were hunting down some kind of criminal activity through the back channels, really. Mm -hmm. Right, and and so that that would fit perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So mine involves my hero academia. Weird. Yeah, who saw that coming? Actually, my daughter and came Pokemon. A really, yeah. No, Naruto. <laughs> Naruto. That actually wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> I think yeah, Academia is too powerful, though. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Yeah. Um, my daughter had a really good one of Reader. Do you guys know Reader Die? Oh, yeah. With, with Miss Paper, that like, mm -hmm. if you just made their powers quirks and mix those two worlds, they would mix almost seamlessly. That would be good. Uh, which was really good. But mine is actually My Hero Academia and One Punch Man, which seems a little obvious at first. But here's how I'm going to twist it. I'm actually taking out All Might and Deku, uh, Midoriya, from the story. And so I want this world full of superheroes and superpower people. And then One Punch Man, who has no powers, <laughs> what he's done is push-ups every day, and he's completely bored. <laughs> <laughs> and and everyone's like, oh, well, you have a great quirk. I don't, I don't have a quirk. <laughs> you want to take care of school? Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> and then the super powerful monsters show up, and all the other superheroes <laughs> are trying so hard <laughs> and using their quirks, and it just it doesn't work. You could almost make it like a school comedy about my hero, uh, One Punch Man, trying to be a good teacher when he doesn't care or have any idea how, how superpowers work. <laughs> Actually, you know what would make a hilarious scene? If you kept All Might in there because he's broken. Right. Um, that last scene where he's, you know, doing ultra, you know, plus ultra, mm -hmm. um, and the, against the dude that the, like the absorption Ramu, dude. Or, yeah, yeah. Imagine he does his whole thing, hits him that one last time, and the dude doesn't move. <laughs> and then All Might disappears into his like frail form. And then here comes here comes Saitama out of that uh, like next to him out of that smoke and just consecutive normal punches and he just explodes. <laughs> yes. That would be good. Yeah, I, I could see uh, Saitama taking the job because he would need the money and and just having such a hard time convey because the, the characters of my hero academia are so optimistic and hopeful. They have so much hope and so much I want to make the world a better place. And one Punch Man is completely devoid of that. It's completely the opposite. And you're trying to convey to these students, like, yeah, I, I guess, try. And then, like, every time he steps in, he just completely robs him of these learning experiences. And his class is the worst. Well, but like, he's, he's giving so, them horrible advice, too. Right? Constantly. And they'd be like, can you teach me how to use your quirk? You should just do push-ups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
and I, I think that would be a really fun series to watch. I mean, both those are, are, are great series. So, uh, yeah. the, I mean, they're, they're both dealing with superheroes. So I feel like they mesh pretty well anyway. I, I don't feel like that was the strangest idea of all time. <laughs> no, that works. Yeah. Um, yeah. That. Yeah, that that kind of any anything off the top of your head, anything you guys came up with that you decided not to go with. The only one that I found that would be not interesting that much, but kind of fun to watch, would be giving all the Naruto characters, uh, like, chi- like uh, Super Saiyan powers, and then just sticking them all in DBZ world or reverse. Actually, I think reverse would be better. Just like tons of ninjas with like chi powers, to where they could do their own energy blasts. Yeah, they didn't. They wouldn't survive though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, because no. <laughs> it would just turn into Goku, Goku destroying universes. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I I think the Naruto power peak is like you're powerful enough to make a valley, right? Like you can destroy landmass enough to make a valley, but that's it. I don't think there's right. anything close to planetary destruction yeah (laughs) and i just watched goku fight beerus and their punches were hitting each other and vibrating so the entire universe was about to shatter oh my god yeah (laughs) (sighs) and that's at the beginning of super that's the first story arc this is oh my this is getting gurren logan yes like soon it's gonna be just you know Entire galaxies mm-hmm. being thrown at each other. Oh, yes. Can you imagine if Gurren Logan and My Hero Academia had a conversation? They would pump each other up so much that their heads would explode. <laughs> we can yeah, do would. it. We can do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what guys. I wanted really bad was to oh, yeah. mix Madoka Magica with something, but I couldn't find anything that mixed well with well, it. Well, that's easy. Sailor Moon. Well, no, no, no. I mean, like something totally opposite. Like I wanted a magic and and fan, uh, magic and sci-fi mix, uh, but I couldn't find a way to to uh, make the two cooperate right in a satisfying way. But do imagine Sailor Moon. In oh the heck yeah! World and having to yeah. deal with that horror of a nightmare. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be oh. great. And uh, yeah, I could I could totally see uh, Serena being absolutely freaked the first time she runs into one right so i think this is a good time to turn it over to our audience to come up with some ideas and we will share those out uh if we get any to to everyone else because uh this is a really fun game to play this is a really fun thought process to have so if you can think of some good animes to mix together and how they would play out how you would mix them uh please let us know you can reach us on our twitter at baka podcast but that might not be enough room to fit. So you can reach us on our email, the anime Baca club at gmail.com. Or you leave a comment wherever you found this podcast and it'll get back to us. And yes, I know we are still currently watching Boruto, Naruto, the next generations. <laughs> it's not quite the star Trek next generations. <laughs> that <laughs> you're Probably hoping it was, but I do hope you are enjoying it. Some people are enjoying it. I mean, it's, it's, it's very popular. So someone's got to be loving it, right? And maybe I am too. You will find out next week when we talk about that anime. Uh, With that said, do you guys have any last words? Thanks for listening. See you next time. Sayonara.